and I will bring it to very simple terms. In order for two people to dance, to do the tango, we need two willing participants. So here we have two unwilling participants. One willing participant on one side that says, I want peace and rights and human rights and uh, freedom of religion as well as respect of freedom of press. And you've got the other side that says, no, no, I want you to dance, but it's going to be my way. I'm going to lead and you've got no choice in this. So how do you get the partner that says you've got no choice in this to start realizing, yes, I have a choice and yes, I can make differences? And that is where the role of the diaspora is in. And I mean, the town of diaspora that is spread around the world. The 200, 300,000 that are in Canada, people in the United States, people in, in Australia, people in England, people in, uh, in India. We can sit here and say the mistakes that England made 50, 60 years ago, and that's, that's what we have to ratify. Well, you know, I know this is to my colleague from England, but there were a lot of mistakes that were made. Not only by the British, but a lot of other countries that were colonial powers. And now, looking at what happened in those colonial powers, can we take examples of places that went wrong and changes are happening? South Africa, for example, massively wrong. And then what happened in the international community, even in our country, provincial legislatures started saying, no, no, we're not going to deal with you. It was the Ontario government in my country that has 10 provinces, and one of those provinces says, no, you're going to be in our blackness. Now, how can we get politicians and members of our diaspora to take the same steps? As we're going to move forward, it's nice to speak in large sentences and we're going to pressure governments and all that stuff, but let's bring it down to bare tactics. What can you as individuals, what can you as politicians or NGOs or professors at the university, what can you aspire your students, your members of your NGO group, or your constituents. You have the power of the pen, you have the power of conversation, and you have the power to move people. And when you start a movement, things have to change, start having to change. There is the saying in my country where I come from Greece that says, one swallow will not does not bring spring. And I'm gonna sort of refine this in Canada. Every uh, spring, you get the Canada geese come October time, they go south, they go south of Florida. Well, in February, one crazy can of goose said, oh, I'm going to go north, and started going north. Just because that can of goose is going north, that doesn't mean spring is coming. You need a lot of geese going north for bring spring. And you need a ground movement. You need a swell. You need a tsunami. A tsunami that knocks at the door of the Sinhala government and says, we're not going to take this anymore, we're not going to tolerate this anymore. Now, a lot of governments belong to different groups. Let's take an example. Sri Lanka. It belongs to CERC, which is the, uh, I believe that's the right term, the South Asian Corporation in South Asia, SARC, right? They belong to the Commonwealth, they belong to the United Nations. So, what can the neighboring countries do? SARC, Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, they can say to Sri Lanka, you know what, you've got to change things because if you don't change things, we don't want you part of our union and trading partners. But those countries themselves, they have difficulties. So, when one country says to the other country, you've got to change, he looks back at it and says, ah, hey, listen, do your own thing. They belong to the Commonwealth. And yet, Commonwealth, we have a lot of countries that have difficulties. The leading countries can make a difference. England can make a difference. Canada can make a difference. Canada made a difference when it came to South Africa. We made a difference when it came to Pakistan. Actually, when Pakistan tested the nuclear bomb back in the mid-90s, we completely made the movement to kick them out of the Commonwealth. And for a period of years, we're out of the Commonwealth. Now, we can do that in Canada. And yet, England can also do the same thing in South Africa or any other part of the Commonwealth. And that vote means you, I'm not talking about the Canadians here today, means you that you approach your member's apartment, you approach your uh, your constituency in his or her office, and you go and say, I got a problem in Sri Lanka, and this is the problem that you get. Mind you, the community has done this very well. But one of the things that I want you to do is I want you, your party to adopt a weak kick Sri Lanka out of the Commonwealth, or our prime minister does not go there. Not vis a vis when we go if these things happen, we just don't go. Very cool stuff on the story, send a message. The same thing can be done in other countries. After that, we can look at the United Nations. We can move quickly to the, to the powers at the center, which is the 
uh, Security Council and try to convince them not to uh, deal with Sri Lanka or put sanctions against Sri Lanka. Well, good luck when it comes to the Chinese, because I know that China is right now taking the port of Sri Lanka and the base and everything else. So the Chinese will be a hard people to communicate. And at the end, it comes to every member of Parliament to do his or her duty in the legislature where they belong. I know that Logan has done his duty in city council and market and he showed us that video. Well, it's upon all of us to take that first step. It's upon all of us to say, no, we're not going to deal with that country. No, we're not going to listen to that country. That country is doing wrong. Don't hesitate to say that in public forums or in private forums. Don't hesitate that to move your constituents in order to write the support and to move that. Now think about this. All of a sudden, a motion goes into the House of Congress and says, we condemn Sri Lanka for what happened. I wonder how my colleague that left earlier today, how would he vote? I'm sure he'll have a hard time about it, and I'm sure that he will be torn in order to support it. But you can make motions and you can make things that can make a difference. And the other thing that we can do is very simple. Start a website. Start a petition, the prime petition that goes to the, the House of Commons, that goes to the, uh, to the White House, Brass Blues Movement. Go we'll talk to your neighbor. How many of you have not met your neighbor? People that live in the United States or in, in, uh, in, uh, in the UK or in Canada. How many of you have taken a pamphlet and walked down the street up and down the street and tried to educate your neighbors about what the problem of Slack is? How many of you really have done it? Put your hands up. One, two, three, four, five, six. I see how people in this room. If only 6% have done it, guess what? We can come to conferences like this and thank you for bringing me and thank you for putting me on the hotel. But we're going to hear the same thing next year and the year after that and the year after that. It takes motivation. It takes willingness to do it. How am I doing with that? Two minutes. It takes motivation and willingness of time. And you know, if you're going to go talk to your neighbors, take along the little one. Take along the six or the five year old or the ten year old and say, he or she has not seen Sri Lanka. I left Sri Lanka because at a point of a gun, my father had to take me out quickly. Folks, that's the only way that you can bring change. That's the only way that we selectively and collectively can make a difference. I can stand up here and tell you thank you very much and give you big words, but I make one promise to you. And that's very simple. When I go back to Canada, I'm going to look how I can pass a couple of motions to sort of like rock the house with it. So, to my colleagues around the world that come from different parts of the world and different uh, partners, you can certainly make a difference. I don't care if it's uh, the Red Party in Norway, I think you've got five municipal council seats, that you can certainly make a difference. Have your five municipal councils stand up in their, their places and make a difference. Or my good friend in Sri Lanka, I know you're making a difference, and you are no horse war horse like me. Folks, it doesn't matter where you are. Take a pen, paper, email, fax, or letter. To send an email to your representative, it costs you absolutely nothing. To go and see your representative, it costs you a dollar or a euro or whatever your currency is or a pound in gasoline. The first part of the is the whole church. In Canada, we have constituency days. For those of you that haven't done that, please do that. And as I'm saying, you know, my time is then, I'd like to come here next year and make sure that we've done something collective, solidified, and that we move forward. Ralph, I'll come back again next year and say the same thing, but it's time for change. And today is the first day of the change. Thanks for having me.